have a beer, shall we? You cheated. Yes, but I'm much better at it than you. Come on. <laughs> they told me a good old Beaumont Sky been off today. What a morning, huh? Yes, what a job. You know, the only other profession that requires you to wear a mask and wield a knife has got to be bank robbery. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be better at that. going on here? No lying about. Come on, come on. You've seen these new instructions. A more conscientious attitude is required. Push off, Morris. Yes, clear off. <laughs> I won't be spoken to like that, Waring. In his absence, I am Professor Beaumont's deputy. And I'm the Sheriff of Sydney, so push off. <laughs> oh, that's your attitude, is it? Well, Professor Beaumont has instructed me to give you these patient discharge summaries to complete all by tomorrow morning. Oh, good. It's your own fault, Waring. Slackness and unreliability can't be tolerated around here. I said to Professor Beaumont, we can't have that sort of thing. Next thing you know, we'll have anarchy. Come on, anarchy. It's when people with big ideas of their own importance start telling other people what to do and start oh. to issue orders and in their own way. Anarchist? <laughs> Obviously. I tell you what, Duncan, how about sloping off to the harbour with me? Valerie Pemberton will be on the boat. Oh, beautiful thing, old boy. Lovely lines. <laughs> Big superstructure, very racy. <laughs> Motor cruiser. I was talking about Valerie Pemberton. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we're supposed to be on duty till six o'clock. Oh, come on, old boy. Take a chance. Live dangerously. Now, that is just the sort of attitude that must be stamped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going anyway. I shan't be needed unless there's an emergency. Perhaps Dougie Fisher will cover for me. Mm, yes, he normally would. Except he doesn't work off credit. <laughs> Well, I suggest that you do something about these summaries immediately. <laughs> You're missing out, you know, old boy. Valerie isn't the only female on the boat. There's another one you'd like her. Really? Oh, yes. Well-built, eager widow with money. Yeah, sounds more like your type, mate. Yes, well, she is, but unfortunately, my hands are tied. She's Valerie's mother. <laughs> Mind you, she doesn't look a day over 40. <laughs> and I'm sure I speak for no, Professor... I reckon we ought to forget it, Dick. <laughs> it smells of disaster. What are you talking about? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Look, you go out with Valerie, right, and you get hitched. I end up with the eager, rich widow, and we get married, right? Yeah. And there is no way, absolutely no way at all, that I want you as a son-in-law. <laughs> Duncan, you do have a vivid imagination. <laughs> anyway, listen, if you change your mind, the boat is called the Sydney Surprise. OK. Well, I'll see you later, then, Daddy. Oh. <laughs> Keep your nose clean, son. <laughs> Uh, oh, Morris, you do get under my feet. <laughs> this is disgraceful. I've a good mind to report him. And as for you, Waring, you'd better do something about these right now. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> ask you this just once only and I want the truth. Where is Dr. Stuart Clark? Uh, what the truth, sir? Dr. Griffin had occasion to consult him and he's not to be found anywhere. The truth? I would probably think he's sitting on a luxury cabin cruiser down in the harbour with one arm round of large gin and tonic and the other round a beautiful bird. I said I wanted the truth, Waring. Oh, but that's, that's the whole point. That is, uh, uh, that is exactly uh, what you asked for, sir. Well, I've told you, sir. Right. I can see I'm not going to get anywhere with you. Case of two palms sticking together, eh? So be it. But I'll tell you this, Waring. My team has a meeting at five o'clock in lecture room A, and if your mate is not there, he gets the chop. The chop, sir? Finito fired the axe, the old heave-ho, the bums rush, the sack. Is that clear? Is the bums rush the same as the old heave-ho and the axe? Right. Oh. You're an underhand, sneaky little twerp. I think it's possible my nose is bleeding. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let me have a look. Hold it. Easy. No, it's not. 
Oh, God. Not yet. Oh, no, don't strike! Uh, listen, I'll see you when I get back. But you're on duty. Where are you going? <laughs> I've been left alone to cope. Of course, I'm managing all right, sir, but on the other hand. What is the name of this boat? Norman, are you ready? We've got to be there in 20 minutes. Uh, yes, yes, beloved, it's, it's the hospital. Um, what did you say it was called? I believe it's called the Sydney Surprise, sir. Yes, sir, at the Middle Harbour Marina. Well, now, if you hurry, sir. And I might add that wearing physically attacked me, causing severe nasal contusions. <laughs> Uh, I think you may have saved the day, Griffin. One does one's duty to one's calling, sir. <laughs> and might I suggest, sir, that since this was originally Stuart Clark's fault, that this provides a perfect opportunity for you to show Professor Wilkinson and his anaesthetists that it's we surgeons who are the vertebral column of St. Barnabas. <laughs> are you still there, sir? Did you hear me? Um, yes, it's, uh, it's an emergency call from the hospital, um, Muriel. Um, there's been a major catastrophe down at the uh, Middle Harbour Marina. I'm needed. Never mind some tin pot catastrophe. What am I going to tell the ladies' tea circle? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Wilkinson, but this is Professor. Are you still there, sir? <laughs> Professor Beaumont, sir? Norman! <laughs> 